Welcome to Decode Your Burnout, the podcast where we crack the code on burnout based on three primary factors, your programming, environment, and personality. We also feature experts who debunk the myths about what it takes to be successful in their industry and spin those tips to fit the workplace so you can optimize the way you work. I'm your host, Dr. Sharon Grossman, a psychologist turned coach, author, and burnout expert. If you're burned out and want to go from exhausted to extraordinary, book a free breakthrough session with me by going to bookachatwithsharon.com. And if you want to see how you're doing and what to focus on next, download the burnout checklist. You'll find the link in the show notes or go to bit.ly forward slash check your burnout. Now let's get started. Are you a business owner who had to reinvent your business in 2020 as a result of COVID? If so, you will completely resonate with today's story. This is part two of my interview with Belinda Ellsworth. She is a very successful entrepreneur who had to continually reinvent herself. In this part of the interview, she talks about the loss she experienced in her business, as well as the importance of being bold in moving forward and being successful. Listen in. One thing I can say is you clearly know yourself pretty well, which is always a plus because I have people who really do something and sometimes they're even very successful in their business. But you know how you talked about identifying your why? What I find is like they don't have total clarity about the why. They're kind of they kind of get stuck at the surface level. So I just had a call the other day with this guy who's got this trucking business and he's trying to create all of these electrical vehicles on the road. And so I was like, what's your goal? And he's like, I want to be at a billion dollars. I'm going to have X 500 trucks on the road and this and that. And I'm like, and what, you know, what's the why behind that? And he basically said, so that I can then be really profitable, sell the business and then be able to do it again. So he's done this. So, you know, he's been very successful. I've done this multiple times, multiple businesses. And I'm like trying to get to, and why do you want to like, be able to sell it and start over and do this over and over again. Like, I'm just trying to get what's underneath that. And he's like, I don't know. And I think this is where our programming comes in really strong, where we're kind of conditioned to think about what I need to do, but we don't necessarily know what's driving us. Mm -hmm. There's almost like subconscious stuff that's happening. That's kind of in the driver's seat, which I find actually fascinating but in your case, you actually do know, which is, you know, definitely puts you ahead of the curve. <laughs> and, um, you know, I, I also want to just highlight how, you know, from a personality perspective, you're clearly a doer because you're hustling, you're doing all this stuff. And some, there's good and bad to that, right? Because mm-hmm. you can get into a place where you're overdoing it. Yep. And that's what happened when you were back in the sales role where you got burned out the first time. Um, And then during COVID, when you're trying to reinvent yourself, you are kind of in overdrive because of the panic. And Mm -hmm. then that led to some burnout. So that's the negative. But I think like the positive is that you don't get stuck as much, right? You're like, okay, let's just figure something else out. Let's do it. Let's go. And there's a lot of people who don't actually have that same drive and they're not as motivated and they're not as maybe creative in terms of like, so what else can I try? They get stuck in the I don't knows. Yes. which is a kind of dangerous place to be. Um, the other thing, so there are two other things I wanted to kind of circle back to your story. One is you said about your book how you kind of knew that summertime wasn't the time to release it. And so it, I think it's just a reminder for all of us that if we have that inner knowing, that we mm-hmm. really have to listen to that. You you do. Um, I, that intuition or that gut, and it doesn't, it's not just intuition and gut that comes from knowing, knowing when I've released books before, knowing Parents. how people are in the summertime. Um, and this has been an even weirder summer than normal. I mean, um, we've got the people just kind of check out, but then we've got inflation and people worried and people saving every money, every bit of money that they have right now. So we've got this combo of 
I'm not really engaged and I know I'm not sure what's coming. So I'm going to save every time that I have. So it's like this perfect storm of a combo for releasing a product, even though it's not an expensive product. I think, I think people are, um, do you know, for me and, um, and you're right, I am pretty in tune with myself. Um, and I think that's an important thing. I always, a little thing I always say for people is take a checkup from the neck up, like look in the mirror and, and be super honest with what, what am I really doing or, or what do I want to do or what is my problem? Um, and, and I really have in, and, and I'm actually, actually just got a book on it. And like, um, I think what I'm experiencing even more, and it's took me a while to figure this out even more than maybe burnout is grief. Um, and so I bought, I just bought a book on coping with grief um, because yeah. I had really about like six more years, seven years. Like I had my map. I'm going to work this hard for about seven more years. Um, my daughter will be finished through college. We'll have our house paid off. Like I was starting to think about, okay, I'll probably still do some consulting or I'll just do this. But I maybe I'll only have one staff member, like a personal assistant. And I'm just going to like really start to downsize this thing and then like not have to work this hard and enjoy life of all these years you've worked, right? And it got cut short. And so now it's like, I just really want it to go back to what it was and continue this out for the next six years so that I don't have to refigure it out. I don't have to reinvent myself again. I don't want to reinvent myself at this age. But then, then I stop and say, okay, um, I've had two really awesome mentors in my lifetime, like of in sales and um, just really two great female um, uh, entrepreneurs. And one passed away, I think three years ago, and she was 101. Wow. I know. And my other one, just my other really great friend that I just loved having amazing conversations with. I just had a two and a half hour conversation with her in February and she just passed away in April and she was 98. And I look at both of these women and how strong they were. And like the one that died at 101, I interviewed her on her 100th birthday and said, do you ever think about retiring? And she was like, oh, honey, from what? Like, I've got too many people to love on. There's too many people to meet. There's too many people to talk to. And I go back and I look at what full lives that both of them had into their 90s and how active they were. And I think that's what helped them stay active. And so then I keep telling myself, what do you want to retire at, you know, you know, 67 years for like, really, but it's not really retiring as I pictured my life just differently. So now I'm like, okay, I got to create that. I got to make the picture look different. And it, I don't know, that's what I'm struggling with. I guess it's really grief of what I thought was going to be isn't. And, and now let's figure out what it is. Yeah. So a couple of things about that. I think when we have the kind of loss that you've had, not just in your business and the plans for your future, but I mean, you've lost these two amazing women. I'm sure there's like all kinds of losses, right? And Mm -hmm. in our society, we're not really, there's not a lot of emphasis on grieving. It's kind Mm -hmm. of like, well, let's just like get past this and let's move on, right? So I think the first step is really to honor your feelings. And Mm -hmm. I love that you brought a book on processing grief and hopefully that's going to help you. I think, you know, there is the danger of always comparing where we are now to where we thought we would be or where we used to be. And that doesn't really help because I mean, truth be told, like, you know, something has changed, right? So I think, yes, grieving that, grieving that loss and accepting that you're in a new reality and then doing the best you can to move forward And you've done a really good job of reinventing yourself. It may not be where you thought it would be and so forth, but you're, you're not done. No, you're not done. Like you don't know where this is going to take you. It might be even bigger than you imagined. I know. And and I do. 
I do like lay in bed at night or I wake up in the morning. My time, um, you know, I'm a, th- I'm a thinker at night. I'm actually more of a doer at night. Like I get excited and I'll work on a project. And uh, in the morning is when I like to drink my coffee. And that's my thinking time. You know, it's like, okay. And, and I've been doing that the last couple of days. It's like, okay, you're right. So it could be something spectacular. And I just have to, um, that's where I do think people in their grief, um, they do get stuck, you know, and there's a, a healing process. It doesn't mean that. And, and I do think that people just from things I'm reading and stuff, it's like, you still want it to be, I, I hear this from p- business people all the time. I just wish things would be back to normal. And there really is not a normal, like there in really pandemic, no pandemic, there is no normal. It's that you're, you got a shift change. And so now, and, and that happens with us at different junctures in our life. Um, I mean, like, I'm sure people thought that Kodak was never going to go out of business. You know what I'm saying? Or that no, we weren't going to have newspapers anymore or that you right. weren't, we were just all laughing about it. There's this huge store in our downtown area here where we live in a little small rural town, but it, it takes up a big corner. And I can't think of what it is right now. It's they changed it into like offices or something, but it was a blockbuster and it was massive and it was filled to the brim with videos and you could go in there and you know, I was explaining this to my daughter and like not even get the movie you wanted. You know what I mean? And they would have five copies and they'd all be gone. And like, that's a business model that people made a lot of money in that business model. Like that people that owned like video rental stores, they made a ton of money. And then overnight that business is, is gone. And so lots of people had to figure out things and that's it. It's, there is no normal because it's ever evolving. It's ever changing. Um, And we can say that, but when you're in it, it's still not fun. That's it. It's, it's just not, it's not as fun as you want it to be. And fun fact. So the inside scoop about that blockbuster story is that actually um, I think the person who started Netflix went and spoke to them before Netflix was Netflix and said, hey, I've got this idea about like actually mailing people their DVDs home. And they just kind of laughed them out of the store. You know, like, we don't need you. And so they went off on their own and they launched Netflix and the rest, of course, is history. But I think the, the lesson here is that we get too attached to what works right now. Yep. And, you know, I talk about this a little bit in my book. It's called like a self-efficacy spiral. And you can spiral down or you can spiral up. Right. And one of the things that leads us to spiral down is if we're not, we don't have those checks and balances. We're not looking to uh, see, is this continuing to work? Or I'm just kind of, as you talked about before, kind of resting on your laurels and like, I'm comfortable. It's okay. I don't need to do anything different. And then all of a sudden something changes in the environment and the culture and the demand, and we're not paying attention and we're going, we're going down the spiral. So I think there's so many good little nuggets that we talked about today that really tie in beautifully and i'm so happy that you were able to come here and share the real struggle of what it's like to grieve a loss especially when it's your business to also share how when you are focused on the right things what's going well what's my why what's my one win for the day that it gives you the energy to keep going and keep reinventing yourself and keep searching for the answer. Yes. And it's, you know, it's not an easy thing. Mm -mm. It's not an easy thing. It's so much easier to just kind of throw your hands up and say, okay, you know what? I'm done. I can't, I don't know. I know it's funny because um, other people, like, this is when I know, okay, I, I, you know what? I can't talk to you. Like, there's only certain people you can talk to as well, right? So some people will ask and they'll go, well, you probably should downsize. Like, you don't need this big of a house. You know, you don't even, your daughter now, the last child is off to college. And it's like, but I love my home. Like, I don't want to get rid of my home. I have, I, I've, I've worked for a long time to have this home on the lake and have this property and, 
enjoy it and we love it. And it's like, and I said that to that guy the other day, I'm like, I don't want to, um, I don't want to sell my home. I don't want to have to buy a yeah. different home. I want to stay exactly right where I am. So, and yeah. that that's part of your why it is. That is part of your why. Like I, I care about lifestyle and I want to have this, you know, for my retirement, I want to be able to sit in my house, which is beautiful and homey and be able to look out on the lake. And there's nothing wrong with that, you know? And, and exactly. actually I would say that solution that this woman gave you might be a fit for somebody else. And that's the thing, the, the secret here is to remember that there are so many different possibilities and solutions out there but they're not a fit for everybody. So we have to be really careful before we dish out advice mm-hmm. and recognize that maybe that's something like I would do, but it's not right for you and vice versa. So we have to be sensitive to yeah. goals, you know, desires, their wishes and what keeps them moving. Yeah. So, yeah. So yeah. I love that you shared uh, something really important, which is love what you do. Mm-hmm. And uh, we talked about that energy exchange, making sure that it's not enough to just love what you do, but you have to feel like you're getting something back from all of the energy that you're putting in. And uh, as an example, I recently spoke to somebody who loves what he does. He's really good at it. And he's really burned out because he doesn't get recognized for all the things that he's doing. Mm-hmm. Right. That's, that's a form of energy too, is just yeah. having somebody tell you, you changed my life, you, you know? And he says, actually, people do come up to him and say that to him, but they, he doesn't get publicly acknowledged. Mm-hmm. And that's really burning him out because he's not getting the credit. It's not helping promote his career. He's not getting the speaking engagements. Like people who he helps get to go and have their career flourish. And like, he's kind of like, hey, I'm the one who helped you. And like, nobody's coming back and saying, this is all because of, you know? Right. And so I, I just want to say that people burn out for all different reasons that have to do with that negative energy exchange. And so it's important for us to pay attention to that because we don't talk enough about that, I think. I think you're right. I think there's a, a big piece to that. Um, it's really funny. And, and I think this is good for other people to understand maybe. Um, so we asked people like, cause we sell this planner and the planner's awesome. Like it's such a good planner. Cause I put everything into it that a salesperson needs to track and what they need to do. And um, so people are like, oh my gosh, this is the best planner ever. I would never use another planner. Let's change my business. Um, so we decided for the next launch in September, let's have little mini 30 second, you know, 15 second, 30 second little testimonial videos that we can just sort of put out uh, like reels, you know, yeah. in social media. And uh, I asked people, I told them where to do the Dropbox. I told them where to send it. And this was about a month ago, I guess now, a month and a half ago. And do you know how many I have? Zero. Mm. Like, there and and it and we get written things all the time that people send us about how they love it. There's fear for people. Like when we say there's fear around video and there's fear around filming yourself and um and that's so much of what we need to do to be present if you want to promote yourself today. Like I had to get over it. Like I was slow to the game of being online and being social. Like we had social followings and social media, but like I'm like, I don't, I don't, I don't need to go live on camera. Well, guess what? When you're going nowhere, you're not live anywhere else. You got to get comfortable with being live on camera. And I, I had to do that fast Mm -hmm. and figure it out. So then I was like, okay, what will make me more comfortable? Um, My setup made me more comfortable knowing that my lighting was good and I didn't have to fool with it right before I was getting ready to go on. Like some of these people tell you walk around with your camera or your, your phone and find the right lighting. It's like, nobody's got time for that. So I need to be able to plug and play. Like I need to sit down here and I need to go. So I then created that space so that I feel really good, but like people are still intimidated by creating video that is valuable. So it's just interesting. Yeah. But I think it's a good reminder that what, if you are in that digital space and you are going to be on video and doing zooms and things like that, just get yourself set up in the way that you talked about with the lights and the microphone and whatever it is, that's going to allow you to show up and feel confident. Yes. 
Yeah. It's about feeling confident for sure. So if somebody wants to get that planner or maybe in September, get your gratitude journal or find out more about what it's like to work with you, where should they go? Gosh, there's all kinds of places. So they can check out work from your happy place. Um, we have a, a smaller store there that is, it has the planner. It has a gratitude journal. Um, and then, so I've done a lot of work um, in the, in the direct selling space. And so step into success is where we have some followers. That's where I do some free training on Tuesday nights, but our podcast is filled. I do Tuesday tips. So there's words of wisdom there every Tuesday. That would be one of the best places for them to check out. Um, They can email us there. Um, They can find me at Belinda Ellsworth on LinkedIn um, and they can message me there. <clears throat> I answer messages regularly. And um, and then Step Into Success is also uh, a brand where we have a lot of followers on Facebook. So lots of great places to reach you and learn more about what you do. And of course, the podcast is a free resource. So I really invite everybody to take advantage of that and to see where you might learn something because as we mentioned in the beginning, Belinda has years and years of success, especially if you're an entrepreneur, check that out. And um, if you are not an entrepreneur, if you are somebody who works in corporate, perhaps, um, you know, work from your happy place, I think can also relate to you. So regardless of where you work, I think it would be a good resource. You know, a hundred percent. So we, we have most, primarily small business owners, but entrepreneurs. But when it's when I have someone from corporate on there that they've started a business and now it's a pretty big business and they've got, you know, hundreds of employees, let's say, um, it's really up to them to create an environment that people want to show up and love what they do. And so they'll share lots of advice on, you know, how do you lead a group like this to make them want to be at work every day? How do you value people? Um, so there's lots of great information on there. Yeah, it's not just entrepreneurs. We did in- introduce artists uh, a little over a year ago. I decided that that would be fun. And um, so every Thursday we interview an artist and it, that's fun too, because they come from a different, you know, their brain functions on a different side. They're more the creativity side versus the business side. But I find that really to have a very successful career in whatever it is, you need to, those two need to get married and you have to merge the two. You do. And so that's why we really went like sort of right brain, left brain and how the two meet and where are the strengths and weaknesses of the two and where can they learn from one another? So it's been really, that was something I had an epiphany as I was sitting in my studio one day and it was like, and I don't waste any time when I have one of those. I just said to my husband, okay, we need to find some artists for the show. And we <laughs> literally, <laughs> we did, we started calling on people and, um, and And we were pretty bold. And this is where I get mad at myself. I was pretty bold. Like we reached out to um, Ben Folds. He was doing a big event and it was like, okay, let's. And I reached out to the people from the Geico commercial. And like, we were pretty bold. And now I haven't been as bold. I've just been waiting for the people now are like sending us information. Like we'd like to be on your show. And it takes being bold. Uh, It really does. And so you just have to get back in that space of be bold because, uh, you know what, this is the number one thing about sales. You got to ask, because if you don't ask, you, the answer will always be no. Yeah. And it's not like they're not getting anything in return. I mean, you have a big following on your podcast. So potentially if they're an artist, they can get more people yep. listening to their music or buying their art or whatever it is. So. Yeah, I, I love the idea of be bold, but I think also I think the thing that keeps people from being able to do that is that fear of rejection, which is so palpable. So uh, I do think that if you take that mindset on, you will have more successes than if you didn't. And who cares if you get a few no's along the way? Oh, guaranteed you'll get more no's than yeses. And yes. that is the thing. There is a rhythm to sales. I'm a numbers girl also, like I'm super analytics and I've, and I've kept track of all the analytics over the years. And even in, in recently and telling people to contact five people a day, 
um, it's interesting because the, the data is one in three will buy something. If you reach out, even a past customer and say, I just want to see how you're doing. And, you know, and one in three will buy something. One in five will connect with you in another way. And then one in 10 will like become either a client or, you know, so it's like, yeah, you got to get to 10. You're going to probably get 10 no's. You're going to get, you know, in, and people just can't handle that. The, the biggest reason that people never get a sale is they never, the next one could have been their sale because they don't ask enough people. Yeah. Yeah. So embrace the no. <laughs> exactly. So, so lots of great tips today. Thank you so much, Belinda, for coming on the show and sharing your story with us. Well, thanks for having me. Hopefully it'll be helpful for someone. I hope. <laughs> I'm sure. So for all of you thinkers out there, I'm curious, what did you think of the show? If you are a feeler, how did hearing this make you feel? And for all you doers like Belinda, what are you going to do based on what you've heard here today? Now, regardless of what your personality code is, my goal is to spread the word that burnout is a unique experience. And by decoding it, you can find solutions that are uniquely uh, great for you. So help me spread this message by subscribing to the show on Apple or Spotify and leaving us a review telling us what you think, feel, or do differently because of the show. And if you're watching us on YouTube, you can also leave me a comment or questions to answer in future episodes. And please recommend the show to anyone struggling with burnout. If you are ready to take the next step with me to decode your burnout, go to decodeyourburnout.com and I'll see you right back here next week. Take care.